Hello everyone and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I'm going to test launch the heavy drop ship to Minmus and try to drop its payload onto Minmus and then bring it back. This is obviously going to be a long shot as far as the bringing it back is concerned. However, I already tested this launch system during a live stream on Twitch and I know it works. I thought about chopping up the video from Twitch and presenting it as a video on YouTube, but I think just launching it again will be best. Uh, we basically started off with two boosters, the ones on the side next to the wing, and the game lied about the total delta V of that stage, and then I realized that we needed more boosters, so I put more boosters and more struts and all that business. So it wasn't exactly revolutionary. However, opening the craft file of it does tend to occasionally make <laughs> Uh, some engines go awry here, and that's because of the way symmetry was done, presumably. Let me just replace those four engines. I don't know why that happened. It's not even symmetrical to anything else. So... The ones under the wing are symmetrical to each other. Oop. Oop. Uh, well, again, it doesn't really matter how they're placed. <laughs> as long as they're going straight out the back, thank you. Uh, the rest uh, appear to be fine, so weird things still continue happening. And yeah, we will see how it goes. So it launched, but we weren't carrying any payload to Minmus. So yeah, and it did not manage to land on Minmus. There was a slight imbalance in vectors. However, we don't really require that much thrust from Minmus. And so even a slight imbalance caused issues on landing. And so I decided that I would fix it. We don't have much by way of reaction wheels on this thing. And we also don't have the RCS. Uh oh. Structural failure on linkage between transition and... Now, see, that did not happen during the test launch. Gosh darn it, game. Okay, maybe I should replace the struts or something. Uh, it's between the tanks and... That's the... Control... Uh, I think those are the control surfaces, yeah. I think we're just using control surfaces here. You know what? Maybe we could launch with just those. But this is a uh, decoupler, so we can't launch with the decoupler not connected to the... Let me just see. Uh, let's let's try this. Hold on. I think maybe during the live stream... I guess we can't time warp to morning because we've got this stuff going 0.5 meters per second. I think during the live stream we might have launched on a failure as well. So maybe we'll just see how this goes. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, I guess it's not the kind of failure that we can launch on. I forget what the failure was in that case. But it didn't seem like the rocket had failed at all, so... I decided to go with it and it worked. But, not this time. Let me just change out some struts. I mean, they seem to be connected, but I'll just change them out for new ones. Okay, I have restrutted with a vengeance. There are now six struts instead of four per booster. And I haven't added anything to the control surfaces in the back here. If we lose one, it, they'll probably be alright. Uh, but it's a little bit sad that a uh, transition, which they have been very reliable so far, would choose to fall off. We'll see. Maybe it was just because one of the boosters fell off or something. But I think there was more transitions than boosters, so we'll see. That said they fell off. Okay... Uh... Well, one fell off, but it didn't say anything. <laughs> now, it, now one actually fell off, but it didn't give a dialogue for it. And... Last time, I swear, I didn't actually see one fall off, but... This time I actually see one fall off and it didn't give me a dialogue. Anyway, we can time warp. We might as well launch in the morning. Oh, now everything fell apart. Maybe I shouldn't have time warped. It was the same stuff too. Instead of time warping to morning, I'll just do that before we launch. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow we'll get this going. Okay, we lost two fins this time. That I don't know if it's enough finage to uh, maintain our balance, but we'll go steep. I'm, I'm not gonna try it. We'll, we'll just say those were ne not necessary. And... And go!
We probably didn't need the extra weight anyway. We're not using the core or anything like that. The boosters are supposed to get close to orbit, close enough that it will circularize. Okay, beginning to turn. Just don't need to go too far away from prograde right now. Okay, looking good. We're definitely past the speed of sound. Okay, yeah, pretty smooth now. But I don't trust the Delta V still. <laughs> uh, I don't think we have 3,000 actually. I mean, it's a straight stage, in other words. There's nothing firing after we separate these de uh, decouplers, right? The decouplers separate off the only bits that are containing fuel and providing thrust right now. I'd understand it if we were lighting the core at the same time at getting the Delta V wrong, but we we're not lighting the core at the same time. But we certainly don't have 1,900 right now, so let's curb that. In fact, uh, let's just coast to Apoapsis. Our reaction wheel is not very powerful. We could up that a bit. We could drop some in the bay. Okay, igniting for orbit. But we won't take the boosters all the way to orbit, we will dispose of them. Okay, so that will be their disposal. Let's just separate. Very nice and clean. Well, it apparently gimbals, but it doesn't gimbal super well, because we, it can't even turn us to prograde right now. Let me just toggle that. Well, anyway, we can take this orbit, but yeah. The reaction wheel on here, such as it is, isn't great, and the gimbling of the engine doesn't help too much either, so... I mean... Well, it is what it is. Of course, the gimbling of the vectors will be very powerful, but... Perhaps too powerful for Minmus. So I've adjusted them a little bit so that they're better balanced, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna ultimately prefer putting thuds on here for Minmus because we don't really need all this thrust for Minmus. And maybe even for the moon, this is overdoing it. I mean, it could lift this off of Kerbin after all without the hydrogen fuel and without any payload. So, yeah, I'll consider that. But for now, we are in orbit. The launcher worked, despite the loss of two fins. We had two surplus fins, just like uh, certain launchers might have surplus engines. Okay, well, there's an encounter there. We'll just take that for now. The nuclear engine sh certainly has enough fuel for it. No problems. Sizing up certainly helps the whole dropship concept. The margins are not quite as tight as they were for the original dropship. Okay, I'll just do it as indicated. Go. Seems to have some trouble actually keeping it where it's supposed to be. Well, I'll, I'll just have to slow down with it and try and see if we can. The engine should be close enough to the center mass to make this work out pretty well. The two vector engines are down there, and then the wing, of course, has mass. But all together... At least with this engine, it doesn't seem to tell me I need 2,000 meters per second to get to Minmus. I don't want to use RCS. I mean, obviously that will be the realistic thing to do, but we're in stock. We should make sure it can keep itself balanced on the reaction wheels. And then the RCS we can just use for what RCS is used for around here. When in stock, do as stock people do. Okay, and encounter. It's a little bit far. Okay, so a quick retrograde burn and another prograde burn has got us this approach. I'll have to take it. Our engine is too powerful to try and make fine adjustments here. So, we continue. I think we'll do the rest with the vectors. Yeah, we'll go with the vectors and control from the top here. Oh, 
All right, periapsis 84. I think we should go in a little bit and that'll help us test the balance of the engine. So in seems okay for now, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That was too short a burn to really tell actually. Okay. Letting the vectors do their job, hopefully. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. And, well, there's a flat over here, but by the time we get over there, Mimis will rotate, so we'll probably be landing here, in the big one. Okay, we'll bring the orbit down, maybe land around here-ish. It looks like the moon did not rotate as much as I thought it would. Okay, I will leave it some lead here. That burn was pretty smooth. Now originally I had baguettes on the payload in order to make sure it stopped from rolling. Uh, basically the baguettes were the landing legs, but then the baguettes were sticking out of the cargo bay with this particular payload because it's somewhat bulky. So I took the baguettes off, so the payload may or may not roll around on the surface. We are just testing the premise, we are not concerned about the details. <laughs> um, Having the two vectors in line is definitely not great for roll. It does like to roll around. But they seem better balanced this time. We're certainly carrying a lot more fuel than we need for this payload. It's about five tons. I really think they should make the crew cabins. These are uh, cabins. They're like the bigger hitchhiker storage containers. They're really very light. They're probably too light. It's better to have challenging payloads. Yeah, they're really powerful for Minmus. I have to constantly turn them off. That's a pretty low altitude for ground camera activation. I don't care about sideways motion right now. These. This is not something with landing legs that can tip over. We should be good. One fringe benefit of making a dropship. Here, let's get the UI-less view. Okay, wow, it hopped up. <laughs> well, there goes it being cinematic and everything. Okay, let's try and get the payload out. It's not even properly on its landing gear right now. Sorta, I guess? I don't know what's going on with those. Okay, so yeah, it's these rather large cabins. And no docking acquiring force on either of those. Undock. So it did sort of fill the bay. I mean, it took the diameter of this bay to carry them, but it's only five tons, so it's not very heavy. So again, I wish we had things that were heavier, more of a challenge. This could certainly deal with them, but right now I feel like we don't. All right, anyway, it's on the surface. So let's switch vessels again. Hope it doesn't explode. Anytime I switch vessels, there's a high probability of explosion. Now it's showing a delta V here. Okay, well, uh, let's just go ahead and we're holding that. Ascend. Gear up. I should action group the cargo bay. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's point prograde. And with that delta V, we could do everything else with these engines. And probably should, <laughs> just to get rid of the fuel before we land. Maybe we'll just manually capture in Superban orbit, instead of coming in from uh, from a high trajectory. Though we should test the high trajectory version at some point. Okay, making orbit. Nope, oh, uh, went too high on the apoapsis. But that's alright. 
I think, let's see if we can just go straight out to Kerbin. Yes, we can. Our Apoapsis is on that side. So, I'll create a maneuver for the formality of it, but we know we need to go this way. And we know it's going to show me completely wrong, the completely wrong thing when I do that. So, yeah. But let's just go with this. We just need to point in this direction and go. Yeah, and one job game. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, we certainly wanted probably more than that, but I'll go out into Kerbin space first and then see how much I need to do. Okay, we are back in Kerbin space, and yes, our periapsis is too high, so we will correct that. Kind of think of it, this would have been a good burn to do with the nuclear engine since it can be done very, very slowly, but, well, now that we're here. I'll take that for now, because we might want to take extra time to do the burn to reduce our orbit. And I think we will switch to the nuclear engine to do that, dump some of its fuel first. And then we'll dump more of the fuel from the vector system. So... Nuclear engine system off, vector system off. Uh, nuclear system on, vector system off. We've got 1,104 with the nuclear system to swerve. So that gives you... Know, we've got lots of margin here with the upsized version of the dropship. This can certainly carry... I think it can carry any payload that it can fit into its bay, but I'll have to check. But Delta V-wise, we're really well off. Since we have this dialogue, I wish it gave us our current mass. That's one thing I've been missing. I would like to know how heavy I am right now. That was pretty critical back in the day for manually doing Delta V calculations. But... I don't have that number right now, I don't think. it show I don't think it shows me that number anywhere. Pretty perfectly equatorial, really. So it shouldn't be hard getting back to the Space Center if we can... ...figure out exactly how to deorbit to make that happen. Okay, a tiny bit of ignition. Hopefully enough that the reaction wheel can handle it. Well, even as I've done this retroburn, it hasn't read much of a change in our Delta V on the nuclear engine. In fact, I think it's reading that uh, Delta V is going up. We're gonna have to dump a lot of fuel. I mean, in theory, we should be symmetric about the center, because the fuel tanks were placed that way. So maybe we can come down? I think we should save first and see. Okay, I'll go another pass to get into a nicer circular orbit, but we're okay for now. I think it's a little bit better balanced with the swerve now. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. Or at least uh, reducing the fuel or dumping the payload seems to have helped. Alright, we are in a suitable orbit, and... I I think we'll just do everything else with the... Well, we'll do the deorbit burn with the vector engines, I think. Because we have way too much fuel for them right now. I mean, we could use them to set down on the surface. Nice and safe. Maybe I'll reserve it. I mean, it's a toss-up. It's probably safer to use the vectors to land. Maybe? <laughs> than to try and land horizontally. I always have trouble with this one. We're carrying 25 tons of oxidizer, which doesn't make me happy. Okay, I have saved. That's probably a low enough gap that we can do it without an inclination correction, but I'll still correct the inclination just to burn off some fuel. And yeah, I know the Delta V was going up when the nuclear engine was on because it was actually reading this stage. It was reading the Delta V for the vector engines, even though the nuke was on. Okay, I think we've got a good enough situation there. Let's try that. Um, I think we'll just go in shuttle style instead of controlling from the top. Well, 
But controlling from the top makes it easy. See, controlling from the top makes it easier to use the vectors, ultimately. Whereas controlling from the front makes it easier to land like a plane. I think we'll go with a space shuttle orientation. So let me control from there, shut down the buds. I mean, it gives us more range, and maybe we can get to the runway like that. We have negligible reaction wheel power here. Okay, we are getting into a proper orientation as we hit the atmosphere. This is definitely my first time trying this. You'll see how it goes. Location-wise, we are currently here. Uh, I think it's gonna pitch up there. Yeah. We're a little bit tail heavy. I can try and move the hydrogen fuel up front and see if that helps. But last time, <laughs> uh, whenever I try to do this, it goes too fast. Okay, that's going in. Well, that's all of the hydrogen. I don't want I didn't want to do the mephalox because that can be too extreme. We could do the wing tanks into the forward tank though. Didn't need to, but now it's sort of out of whack. Uh I also can't pitch down anyway. <laughs> I think I should prepare to use the vector engines to burn to stall. Uh... This is fine. This is okay. <laughs> Well, I clearly can't keep it into horizontal orientation, so... We'll try our best to go this way. Plunging directly into the ground is not what I wanted you to do. You're gonna be like that. Okay, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch again! Control from here then. Definitely. If you're going to plunge into the ground, this is definitely the way to go. Okay, uh, actually jet time, I suppose. Jeez. Every engine. Okay, we've got jet. I would like to dump some of the oxidizer, though. Jeez. Um, and we're losing speed still, so we should probably try and land sooner rather than later. Oh, gosh. I don't want to land in the mountains, though. Well, might as well use the nuke while we're at it. Oh, uh, that was not the nuke. Oh, uh, are the gen engines not working now, or...? Well, whatever. It's sort of leaning to one side, do you see that? It's using full yaw, for some reason. And I don't feel like the jet engines are doing anything. Let me try and toggle them again. I think the air intakes must be busted or something. Well, we're facing hills again. I wish I thought that the thuds would work out for us. But, I mean, not the thuds, the vectors. But I feel like they might be trouble too. So, we'll just try this. I wish the jet engines were actually producing thrust right now, too. Speaking of things I wish. Uh, 
Uh, uh, breaks, breaks. Oh! Okay, sort of caught in a tree. But it landed. Gosh, there are too many engine combinations to use with this thing, though. <laughs> I have to decide between the jets, the vectors, the nuke, and whether to control from this or that. Too many choices, really. Um, but we managed to land safely back on Kerbin, not quite at the Space Center. Uh, quite a ways away. Let's see where... I didn't think I could make it back. I just couldn't close that gap. Especially since it was spinning out of control. That spinning out of control part needs some work, but at least we can get it back. So, some refinement necessary. It shouldn't be going out of control during re-entry, obviously. So, I'll have to check out how that all works. But hey! Uh, we did the full mission, we just didn't quite get back to the Space Center and we had some minor spinning. So, refinement will be forthcoming, but for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.